Emira Property Fund plans to buy out SA Corporate Real Estate, which has garnered a lot of media attention after several board members resigned. Prudential acquired a big chunk of the business and demanded board changes, and a probe was launched into one of the oldest property companies in South Africa. Now, this is a deal that could make Emira, uh, if it does uh, go through, worth 15.5 billion rand. And joining me more from the inside is Jeff Jennett, the CEO of Emira. Thank you very much for coming in, Jeff. So, um, how, in this particular um, tough times uh, of, of the property business, how ambitious is this? It's relatively ambitious. It's a good thing, we think, for the South African property industry and allows two mid-cap uh, REITs to join together in portfolios that have similarities in terms of being a diversified portfolio and allows shareholders to have uh, greater liquidity, greater size, as greater diversification. And we think at this stage in the property industry, it's a good thing. And also, it'll be a great risk as well at the same time. There are always risks attached to that, but we know the way that we operate at Emira is important to understand everything, assess the risks, and only from assessing the risks can you make that very informed decision in terms of whether to proceed with this. Uh, in the lead up to this deal, we're going to go through uh, some of the stages and hurdles that you have to go over before you get anywhere. But some of the troubles there I mentioned in the intro, uh, how, how is that panning out at the moment? Yeah. From a South African economy perspective, yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's difficult in the, t in the South African economy having a slow GDP growth of only 0.6%. Mm. It's tough. Our tenants are, are taking um, a, a strain, but we continue in, at EMIRA working our tenant retention ratios, making sure we look after our tenants, continuing to reinvest into our portfolio. And it's because of that it allows you then to get through these tough times. And I just, we've mentioned the intro as well, SA Corporate Real Estate, a number of board members uh, mm -hmm. have resigned. Is, is that coincidental or is so it linked? So, yeah, so, so, so that's why this process has, to, has taken quite a while, is that um, we've been in trying to engage with, the S, with SAC since early June, and um, they've had some board uh, member losses. Their uh, past chairman has passed away, sadly, and so there have been some complications. So this is why it's taken a while which actually then got us to that stage where we then needed to visit shareholders and to ascertain whether they had an interest in it. And that was why we then went public with the SENS announcement to share with everybody our non-binding indicative offer so that we could encourage the board to either engage with us or, or preferably to engage with us and then to tell us whether this is something they think we should they sh they're wanting to pursue or not so that we don't waste each other's time. What about Prudential? I mean, what are they saying about the deal now? Prudential, we engaged with them, and Prudential are, are in favour of us engaging. Um, there's obviously discussions that we must have in regard to price and that, and I understand from the latest sense announcement that they've withdrawn their request for an emergency general meeting to appoint um, uh, board members because they've recently appointed four uh, board members. Just give them the capacity to look at this and to make the, the, the best and the most correct informed decision. Now let's just have a look at the, the time uh, line of this deal. So your due diligence, you think, how, how long do you think that's going to take? Yeah, so, so that's the first and, and, and really important part is that, uh, that that due diligence will take between four and eight weeks and very important that it's a reciprocal due diligence for SAC to look at us and for us to have a look at them, understand those cash flows, those contractual commitments that are there um, and so there's at least um, four to eight weeks on that. Once you've got through that, you then have to uh, arrive at a scheme of arrangement and work out what that swap ratio is between SAC and EMIRA shareholders, and maybe there's some versions or hybrids of that. And once you've then reached agreement on that, uh, which could be a, another time, uh, another eight weeks, um, you then move into competition commission, commission approval, which in a transaction this sort of size would take probably three to four months. So we're talking um, maybe early next year early next at the, the, yes. the late, yes. uh, the earliest, shall we yes. say. Okay, and, and uh, let's have a look at that uh, swap as well. Mm. Um, you're offering basically uh, 0.25 Emira shares for four. I know that you were saying earlier the share price has fluctuated. It might be a bit different, but that's basically the board of, that's your deal at the moment, 0.25% for um, SAC shares. Is that, um, is that likely to change at all? Um, it, it all depends on what's going to come out in the due diligence. If we find that the assets um, and the contractual commitments are, are more in our favour, well then we'd need to adjust that. Again, we would adjust that down. I um, mean, let's just clarify what that swap ratio means. It means that for each um, SAC share that someone owns, 
they would get 0.25 to 0.24 to 0.25 EMEA shares. In other words, four or four and a bit SAC shares for each EMEA share that we would offer. Something else I have to ask you, I mean, have you received the full uh, report on SAC uh, that was uh, put out recently? The, are you referring to the whistleblower yeah. um, report? Yeah. No, no, we haven't. You haven't got it. No. I mean, surely it's part of the due diligence. You should be wanting to get a hold of a copy of that and go through it. That will be important. And, and so from a due diligence side, important to understand what's happening at the property level and also understand what's happening at the, at the company level. And that would certainly include that just to make sure that we absolutely understand this before we then actually took that next step. Because ultimately, we, we, we are representing shareholder funds here. We've got to make the right decision for the EMEA shareholders. And that has also has to be a good decision for the SAC shareholders. So it's important to understand that um, and properly understand that before you reach that final um, swap ratio and whatever terms and conditions that we will need. And what about the wider issue of consolidation mm -hmm. in your industry? Um, I mean, there's talk about Safari again today, um, also going the same sort of route. Um, do you think we're going to see a lot more property companies trying to uh, consolidate in these difficult times? It all depends on the particular moving parts inside those companies. So interesting in terms of the Fairvest, Safari, and now um, Capital Land. Um, so, so, so that's got its own path. But um, we do think that this sort of consolidation is a good thing. Um, Emira and SAC are both um, uh, in the top 20 of... SA REITs at the moment, and by combining us would put us into the top 10. And so we think that's a good thing. Um, it's easy always to talk about consolidation, but a lot also boils down to what the price is or what those swap ratios are. So often you have, um, well, you'll always have two management teams. There will be certain synergies. So you've got to work out how best you're going to do that. And at the moment, SAC um, has had some leadership difficulties that they're going through a new board and, and looking to appoint um, e executives. So, so, so we know that they've got some challenges on that side. But then if I look at EMIRA, we've got a proven track record in terms of dealing with some difficult assets. We've come through um, a difficult time. We've rebalanced our portfolio. We've sold off some offices. We've got some capacity. We have an excellent asset management team. So we'll be able to take those existing core skills and apply that where needed into the SAC. So consolidation, we think, is a good thing in this case. So uh, talking about that swap ratio, um, bearing in mind you want these assets you think that will make into a major player in this country, would you be prepared to, to up it a bit if you had to? If, the, if, if what we found um, in the due diligence um, would, uh, would ne necessitate that, then of course we would. And I think and it's also important to understand it's a reciprocal due diligence. Mm -hmm. So we would want SAC to be comfortable with what they're then receiving in return being EMEA shares. So, so um, are we flexible on price? Yes, but very importantly, it has to be at the right price because you can have great properties, but if you end up overpaying for them, well, that's going to cost you forever. And what about um, ju just supposing that the Competition Commission does give you the go-ahead next year, what strategy are you going to use to um, try to improve uh, your fortunes in a very, very distressed market right now? So we would, we would utilize the same EMEA way that we are using at the moment, and that is to get involved with our tenants, to look after our buildings, to make sure that they are, are in top condition, and we would be applying that, that exact same strategy with our proven asset management team in, into SAC. We've got skills in most of their areas, um, and uh, the other important thing is that to the extent that um, it makes sense for us to bring in other parties with us, we would also look to do that. We've got an, um, a, a joint venture in the lower LSM retail side in a property fund that we name in Nucla. So, so there's certain properties in um, SAC that we could look to um, collaborate um, on that. There are other ones as well on the residential side where we team up with um, Transcend. We're a 34.9% shareholder in Transcend. The major shareholder there is IHS. They've got some good skills there on the residential side. There are other players as well that we've also embarked with on the residential. So, 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 so to the extent that we are short on skills, we would add in those, those experts to help us on this because our approach is to collaborate and to co-invest with, with parties. What do you think is the biggest drawback in this deal? Um, on the, the drawback side, there's an interesting question. It's probably going to be um, that by us taking on um, 160 to 200 assets might mean that the focus that we've got on our, on our existing assets that we already own and manage gets diluted. But that's for us to manage on an internal basis. We've got capacity in terms of our team, so we would make absolutely sure that our existing portfolio still receives that EMIRA 
experience, that, that, that mirror way of being looked after while we are busy taking on those assets. And lastly, and uh, very briefly, uh, are you looking out there for any other uh, assets possibly to take over? So, so Emira um, always looks at opportunities that are out there. It's important for us to go and investigate and see what's out there, but nothing that's particular, particularly interesting on the horizon other than SAC at this point in time.